Good evening. Uh, let us pray. Eternal God, we come before you tonight just humbly seeking your mercy and your grace. We ask that you watch over our city, our entire city, and each of the constituents. We ask that you bless each and every one of us. Tonight, Father, we come and we ask that you bless our mayor and our council, and we ask that you watch over them and guide them in every way. Take control of their hearts and their minds, and help that everything that they do would be begun, continued, and ended in you there, Lord Jesus. Guide them in all deliberations, and may their decisions be ones that come from you and will return to you. Bless this meeting. May every word that's said be captive to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May every thought be captive to him. Bless us and keep us in your perfect will as we ask in Jesus' name for his sake we pray. Amen. <coughs> Any additions to the agenda this evening? Being none, we'll move to the <coughs> consent agenda. Um, approved minutes for the regular meeting of 1-7-2014 through Appropriation Ordinance 12-31-2013-B in the amount of $4,921.02. Approve Appropriation Ordinance 01-21-2014 in the amount of $84,696.39. And tree board allocation of $500, which is what? Um, and just the tree board for Barry is he can buy his plants with it. He goes to the <coughs> and stuff, so he's our volunteer for it. Right. Are there any questions, comments, concerns? If not, I'm looking for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 3-0. Have any citizens comments this evening? There being none, we'll move on to the fire department. Chief Sanders. I just need to remove Dalton Lutz from the fire department. Okay. See so not living in town. Just not coming to meetings. Okay. So moved. Okay. All right. Been moved and seconded to remove Dalton Lutz from the fire department. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 3 0. That's all I have. Yeah. Um, Chief Sailor texted me earlier this evening and said he's out of town and Sergeant Rudy is following up on a couple of cases. So, Jonathan. Basically, we're just pretty much getting ready for the <coughs> audit, which is not very far away now and uh, starting to work on Jubilee pretty extensively and um, it's a busy time. What are the dates of the audit? Um, February 13th and 14th. So we'll have one more meeting before that. Anything you're concerned about? No. You've got the water plant and everything. As far down. as I know, yeah. I talked to um, Vicki, when we first started, to ask her how she'd like to have things done, and I think we're... Have we, got a, have we ever got a, a true number? Not yet, because it's not complete, but we are making a payment, one of the... Yeah, um, I saw that. Okay, because that was part of our loan agreement. Mm -hmm. um, when, when is it going to be complete? Wasn't it supposed to be up and running by... Well, it's been running time. since July. Yeah, but wasn't it supposed to be done by like... July or August? The only thing that's that we're lacking is the uh, finalization on one of the wells, and of course the fence hasn't been put up yet. So when do we anticipate that? Yeah. Uh, probably. Well, I talked to Mike Younger the day before yesterday about it, and he's got with the contractor. And we've got it laid out, for staked out, you know, on our property and everything. So Apex going to look at it and get. They've got supposedly they've got their material, so I don't think it's too far off. So. Talking 30 days, we talking 60 days. I don't think we're looking at 60 days. I mean, I would think within the next 30, I would see it, and I can, I can pin them down on a date. Why, why, why isn't it being completed by now? Part of it was the weather, and part of it was materials, and that's the only thing I've been told. About. Wasn't there a deadline on it? Not on the 
Yeah, this is a change order. Right. Yeah, I did visit with William Carr um, and at KDHG and about our lump sum payment. Mm -hmm. um, we have to give a 60-day notice, so I did do that. And um, he, we do not have to be complete even at that. So in the event that it's still not done in 60 days, and we still have to wait those 60 days, it was, it's in the language of the loan agreement. And so I've already submitted that, so when that 60 days is up, we'll go ahead and get a check ready and, and be able to go ahead and send that in. You guys will have to approve that at that time. But And that'll be for the three quarters of a million towards the principal. And I asked him if we did an early payment like that, and of course this one too, would that affect the um, loan forgiveness? And he assured me it would not, so we're good there. So we don't know what we're going to get, even if we're going to get any forgiveness. Or oh, we are going to get forgiveness. We just don't know what the total um, project costs are going to be and what that forgiveness percentage will end up being. But we'll get more than what we thought. Have you got something to. in writing from the, from the state and federal that we, we are going to get this money? Yeah, it's in our loan agreement with them. So I don't trust them as far as I can Request a uh, 10 minute executive session for non elected uh, personnel, including myself, Mayor, uh, Councilman Simage, and uh, Mark, and uh, ask that Sherry excuse herself due to possible conflict. So. We, we can't, we've only got two people. <coughs> you can we go into it. You, you, you can't make a, you can can't decision, take right. action, right. but you can go into executive right. session. Second. Did you? I'll, yeah, some of them. There's only two of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I don't open them now. Yes, yeah, yeah. There's been a motion and a second to go into executive session for 10 minutes to discuss non elected personnel to include Mayor Mel, um, Mr. Councilman Bryant, and Councilman Steinmates. All in favor? Opposed? Two, with one abstention. Meeting back no. Okay, the next item is dilapidated housing. I uh, let's first address over there at 4th and West Street, the one we have the letters on. Uh, talked with Rod, he uh, contacted the owners, and uh, they proceeded to do more securing windows, plugging up holes, and everything. And. Uh, he uh, arranged it so I could go inside and look inside. Uh, the house has been all the lath and everything tore out of it and uh, partial sheet rocking. I mean, it, it could be made into a livable house if somebody wanted to do it. The outside, you know, you've all seen it. But they, they in fact, they were working again today on uh, securing a window and doing some more work on the door. So uh, the question, I guess, and Further up, I went ahead and made a list of other houses in town, not pe the ones that people are living in, but ones that have been vacant for some time that maybe have a hole in the roof or you know just something that's not secure or whatever. And uh, so I, I came up, and I may have missed some, but we got 19 that may need. No, I'm not saying tore down, but that that are in a state that they need to be secured or something done with them, and maybe you know work contact the property owner and, and remind them that you know the city still has a, a program where for two hundred fifty dollars less any asbestos removal you know we'll take care of you know if, if the fire chief okays it for burning not a, not a threat to any other property that we will do that so some of these people when we address you know about doing something with it they remind them as well it might be might be easier just to get out you know from underneath that and we can go through the procedure but Rod just kind of wanted to make sure that as far as what the council was out about on all of these, we're looking for a secure property uh, or, and not necessarily worried about interior, but as long as the outside uh, you know, roof isn't falling in, no visible holes, windows secured, or you, you direct, he was wanting to make sure we're headed in the direction the council wants, and if you want to do more, then you, that's what I think he was wanting. 
before we proceed with anything. So. Well, in along the same regards, we have a letter here dated January 19th addressed to City Council regarding 209 South Monroe Street as a health hazard to whom it may concern. I am writing to request the City Council to please inspect the condition of the house located at 209 South Monroe Street in St. John. The house has not been occupied for many years and is in ill repair. Currently it is being inhabited by at least two feral cats. Most likely it is also infested with other pests, including rodents, making the place a health hazard. Thank you for this, your consideration in this matter. Sincerely, Judy and Leon Shelton, 223 South Monroe Street. That would be just north of Leon Shelton's correct? Yeah. I was contacted by another person today in, on this same property, and it is on the list, but uh, about the cats. They were concerned the cats got in, couldn't get out type thing. There is a hole in the roof on the back porch and maybe the cats got in there couldn't get out. So uh, I did contact uh, Adam about it and he was going to have uh, one of the evening officers check with the property owner and get access to make sure you know you get the cats taken care of. So that part of it hopefully will be addressed. But it's definitely one that in all probability is, is beyond you know but you know we I would entertain that you know contact that person and see if they're open to this at least right. to do that. So, but as far as the others, you know, some of them just like have sat for years and they got a broken out window, or there's a spot on the front where the board's gone and you can see where squirrels have been in and out. You yeah. know, that can be easily fixed. But I'm just we're just worried about security. And I mean, honestly, as you all know, we've probably got some properties in town that you know that maybe inhabited that, you know, it's not our position right now, I don't think, with the council to do anything on that at this point unless you direct us to, but these are vacant and have been for some time, so. Have you got the, the uh, one across from the co-op to the west on your list now? Yep, sure do. Uh, what about the one on across from Delta Osborne? That has been purchased and uh, by someone locally and with the intent to probably demolish that. Okay. And that was that was the earlier concern. I'm saying within the last four to six months, and uh, contacted the owner on that, and you know, told them kind of what they were up against. And so I had another person who said, "Well, I'd be willing to buy it for the lot." So and, you know, tear it. I have, they haven't torn it down yet, but I can revisit that on it. But it that's that is a new owner on that. What about the one on the corner of South and Muddy? On this, what would be the southwest corner? corner? Yes, that's on there. Yeah. So I've, I've, like I say, I've, it's kind of rough right here, but I can get you a printout or whatever you want to do. So it's, but anyway, so I guess you want us right now initially just to address what what we see right now as far as getting secured. Now some of these that obvious, like what you just mentioned, that needs to be gone. So, uh, but it has been inhabited in the last three years. Oh. That recent? I believe so. Hmm. We talking? can check mm -hmm. the utilities. Yeah, we can see that. So but. the little it's across the street from um, La Chance. South of the Chance. South of La Chance, across mm -hmm. the street. So uh if you go just you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah. Yeah. Go by all the time. Yeah, I <laughs> figured you. The other thing too, we did have someone that had bought a house next door to them with the intent of getting it taken care of themselves. The people moved out and so they seized the opportunity to buy it. And the house is beyond any repair, uh, but don't want it burned. And it does have transite siding on it and he's talking about demoing it himself. And as I told him the city really doesn't have any program. You know, when we first started the dilapidated housing years ago, it was, you know, the city would go in and get the, not the asbestos, but the shingles off. It's up to the homeowner to get all the household trash and anything inside, furniture wise, and uh, linoleum or whatever, we get it inspected. And, but any asbestos related material, it was up to the homeowner to take care of. But and I said, you know, if you want to, 
get the transite siding off and have us burn it, but I did talk to the fire chief before the meeting and he's in agreement it isn't one to be burned. So I, he's pretty much on his own here on that and I think he understood that going into it, but I did say I would bring it up. I don't, unless we want to do something different to what we have been. So, uh, so then you're going to be sending letters out on all of these properties that you have your list on at this point. Reminding them of what the ordinance is and that they need to get them secured. Right. That's that's my question. Is that the way we want to proceed? That's what yes. I'm. Yeah. Rod, want to direct? Is that what you want us to do right now? Uh, the ones that are obviously, or what, you know, what my opinion might be, and, and you know, Rod can look at them too. But if it's something that is obvious in our mind beyond repair, we can approach them about see if they'd be interested in the 215 proposition. Where, where are you going to draw the line of being secure? Well, that's what he's asking us for as direction. Yeah, Do I'm we, are we, are we looking at just making sure that it is, it's basically sealed from the exterior to where things can't get into it, and the interior condition doesn't matter, or are we looking for it to be inhabitable, or what are we looking for? I think at this point we should just have it secured. No visible holes like you're talking about. Yeah. I, I saw one house that it's tight as a drum, except you know somebody's busted out some windows, right? And they need to they need to be boarded up or yeah, done something else so you yeah. can't get in. And you know we've got have like I mentioned, we've got one building that I saw that uh, some of the boards at the corners are, are opened up, and you can see where squirrels or something been going through. You might have a foundation, no basement necessarily, but a foundation that mm -hmm. got a rock gone or something like that and it's you know it's something that something can go in and out of you know animal wise and that's you know the, one of the our complaints is well the cats and you know we've had the skunks and all that if you don't don't get a place for them to get in then yeah. you know they're not really necessarily going to stick around if you've got a good warm place to go or a warmer place to go that's what they're looking for so that's what I would say is secure you know just all easy access right do you have any thoughts? No, no, no. Not, not okay. <coughs> okay. Other than my security, or my secure, and somebody else's secure might be two different things. Okay. So. Or not mine, but the council secure. I think it should be kind of some guidelines wrote down as to how to secure. Okay. Do we have something like that? No. I'm, well, what, just, Bob, what do you, are you thinking something different other than just have no visible openings, or if you well, want I, us to go up and make sure that if somebody walks up, they can't twist the doorknob and go in, or what, I, I just... I mean, you can plug a hole by putting a piece of four-bay plywood on it, and that's not going to do anything for your town, other than make it look like a run-down, trashy place, you know, uh... That's just my thoughts on the thing. I mean, the, the one I worked on was very unsecure when I started, but it's not now. I, I see what you're saying. I mean, we can we can secure things. In fact, you know, there's numerous places we could go to, and you've all seen them that are secure, but they've got boards over the window. Right. And you can have boards over the window and the rest of the place look pretty nice, or you can have boards over the window, and it, the whole thing looks bad. So exactly, that's that's where I was, that's what I was. Thinking. If you're going to try to make the make your town, you know. I don't think right now any of our ordinances address exterior paint or anything like you know, that. Yeah, it does. I mean, doesn't. like that's that's what I was getting at. We may have some places that you know we, we do something here, and that was how we started out. That we wanted to kind of be. You know, even with everyone, right. uh, you know, there may be places that need to paint. You know, honestly, maybe they can't afford to paint. Them. Right. I can so, see that point too. And you know, you've got a house that's, you know, if they're not willing to put glass in the windows and you know, you know, really make it look like something, probably the last thing they're going to think of is, well, I'm gonna, this thing needs a coat of paint. Unless they've got a specific plan, most people, you know. But somebody wants to buy it, or someone wants to buy it for a fixer up, or it's going to sit there, and, I, and that's, I think that's, that was Rod's thought. Where, what, how far do we want to go with this right now? 
We can start out with the letters, and that's that's a you know it can be looked at as a safety issue. We can address the safety part first. We get get rid of the the places where kids can crawl in and out of, or, or you know, animals or whatever. So that can be the first step. And if you want to take it further, we can. Or how, just I think we need to start with securing properties where mm -hmm. kids can't get into them, animals can't get into them. You know, there aren't holes in the roof or whatever. If they board them up, repair, replace, whatever. I think that's where we need to start. Mm -hmm. But then I think we need to continue to go forward once we get those taken care of. And we can continue to talk about that and come up with a game plan for how we're going to address that. I would not be happy if some of these houses were right by me and they were just boarded up. Yeah. And I think, you know, I, I, I would have to refresh my memory on it. And we may have something in there against the, the boarding up, but we have lots of other places that have boards on them already. But we're 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 talking about today and, and what's what we're wanting to take care of now. So, uh, so you've been working with Rod on this. Are is it your intention to have him do the letters and send the letters out? No, I think you know, Mark. You brought up you know at the last meeting when we discussed this, we want to make sure we went through this in the proper way. I right. think the, the city can send out the letters. I mean, I don't have an issue with that. We just want to make sure as far as in the, the legal department, as far as how we went about this. And I think at least we know what we want to try and do, and we will do this in accordance with our ordinances. And uh, so that's what I see. I just consulted Rod, you know, because he brought up the meeting, and he's been, been helpful, and because well, we just need to find out for sure what, what the council wants before we proceed so we don't do this and tell everybody to put boards on there, and the next next letter we say, the boards aren't good enough, you need to put glass in there. So that's that's, where I think we're at. Okay, so council's in agreement then that we are looking for secure to where children and animals cannot get in. Um, and at this point, we're not going to require that glass be replaced with glass, et cetera. We just want the openings closed up and the buildings secured. Right. Um, I would like to see the letter before it goes oh, out. Okay. Oh, oh, and yeah. so, um, because that's probably going to kind of we're fall paying. back into the office so, here. So we're just getting our head above oh, water for year end and we're getting ready for the audit. Uh -huh. There's going to have to be some research on who the homes belong, properties belong to and stuff. So right. okay. be patient with us to get those out. Um, and then there'll be a timeline with those, right. Right? right? So they'll have to be followed up as well. And I'd like for the letter to you, include you something you about, water? you know, the $250 oh, burn okay. policy and have We're it all laid out. And possibly in the shape of a form that they can sign and send back cool. saying we would like for you to come out and inspect our own property with the idea that we would pay the $250 to have a firm. No, I'm, I'm south of here. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would say on Shit, that, some people, I would say some people yeah, might take that as that how dare they say that my house that. or this thing would need to be burnt down. You know, just, That's why I want to look at the letter before. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, it, sending out that letter with it may or may not. So, but we'll do whatever you want to do. But I, I can just see some people reacting adversely to that. So, I mean, and I understand that. And if if that occurs, I'll be more than happy to talk to the individuals and explain to them what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So. So do you have what you need from the council then to yes, go forward on that? Yes. Okay, the next item is backhoe repair. Uh, the backhoe is due for uh, some work to be done on the injectors. We need to probably have those overhead run on the valves and injectors, so in those replaced where it's we're actually to the point where we need to do that. We're seeing a little, while it's running, a little bit of a miss. So we had this done on the uh, loader here a while back, and the guy did an excellent job on it. But it's going to be last. He said it'd be very similar to the price on the loader, which was twenty-two hundred dollars. He'll make two trips out here and, uh, to do that. So I just wanted to okay on that. So. Okay. 
That's all I have. We'll come back to the backhoe repair. Um, I do not have the request for proposal for solid waste done. I don't know that I'm going to be able to get it done. So we're going to need to shift that back into the office and come up, even if it's something just a simple one sheet, this is what we're looking for. Okay. Um, I mean, we've already have two that have submitted without a proposal. It's just what they will do. And it's, yeah. The only one that hasn't is Nisley, and he's, you know, contacted us quite a bit. I'll check with uh, Jane over at Stafford because I think they may have already made the decision. I don't know. So. Okay. Okay. Stafford, yeah. From what I understand, yeah. they went ahead and made a decision. I'll that. check and see if she mm -hmm. has. Did Maxwell too? Yes, I think okay. Maxwell did the same thing. Yeah. Maybe they have one. No, either that or contact nicely and let them know to get their proposal in and then we'll sit down and look at the three proposals and go through them and try and figure out what we're going to do. All right. That's okay. Mel has um, a backhoe repair that he needs to have done that, tell me again. Overhead run on it and then the injectors, by replacement injector, we're seeing that missing a little bit. We had this... Uh, done on the loader here a while back and uh, it was in excess of $2,000 by the time we got all of that done and he ran the overhead and came out for the field trip. It was the same guy as that uh, Detroit, or not Detroit, diesel specialties out of Hutchison. And that's who Barry, we talked to them about doing the loader in the first place. He said, we'll tell you right now, we'll take that off and we'll take it to them to get worked on. So we'll just have him come out here and do all that. So. Kind of back on either. It's a uh, John Deere. John Deere. So, are you looking for a motion now, or are you looking just for verbal authorization to go ahead with um, the repair? Authorization to, bring it to go ahead and do it, yeah. And then we'll approve the. Yeah, it's, yeah it's going to be over. It, 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 the last one was twenty-two hundred dollars, so I just want to get kind of prior approval to spend over that. I mean, it may be two hundred more than that or less or whatever. But I just they want to just show up for the bill. So moved. Okay. Okay. There. Thank you. I would like to, um, Bob, just to catch you up. The request for proposal for solid waste management, I haven't had time to get it done. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to contact nicely and have them get a proposal in, and then the council will sit down with the three proposals and will come to a decision on what we're going to do. Um, I would like to push the cost of living allowance off to the first meeting in February so that we have a full council for that discussion. Does anybody have an objection to that? Yeah. Nope. Can we make a motion to move it to old business then? Is, Is that, that what we need to do? That way we'll keep it on the agenda. So I'll move. Second. Second. All in favor? Motion carries three up. Bring it back up on um, uh, February 4th. Just a reminder we have the um, electrical linemen, um, I don't remember what we called it. Anyway, to discuss our situation with keeping linemen and what we're going to do. Got a workshop before the next meeting starting at, did we say five? Five. Yeah. Yeah. What date was that? February 4th. And that's at five? Yeah. And we'll either work up to the council meeting or we'll adjourn and come back to the council meeting. Actually, we may just roll straight into the council meeting once we're done, even if it's early. And if we can do the agenda so that it reads that way. Um, yeah, we, if we call it a special meeting, we can start it whenever we want to. Yeah, okay. You know, we'll do that. Um, we'll need to just post it as a special meeting. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else for anybody? I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay.
So moved. Right there.